Let me start this one out with a story. The year was 2012. I grew up in this weird period of time where the first half of my childhood, I, I wasn't an active internet user. And at this point, I was just starting to use the internet, but mostly for like flash games. All this to say, I had no idea that Lego Batman the video game was getting a sequel, despite my being on the internet. One day, soon after its release, my mother came home with Lego Batman 2, having rented it for the weekend. I was ecstatic. Lego Batman 1 was one of my all-time favorites at the time, and seeing Superman on the cover for the sequel, well, I got, uh, I got goosebumps. Not, not the book series. I couldn't wait to pop that disc into my Wii. I booted it up and pressed start on the edge of my seat to see what Lego Batman 2 would bring. Fans of billionaire industrialists are in for a treat tonight as frontrunners Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor face off at the annual Man of the Year award ceremony. Talk? No. Talk? No. What the heck is going on? Why are there actual words being spoken in a Lego game? Little did I know, that would become the standard from then on for Lego games. Sure, I was upset at the time, as were a lot of people. A lot of people are still upset about that today. I've personally come to terms with it, as having dialogue is kind of required if they want to have a story any more complicated than just villains escape Arkham, catch them. But I'm not saying the story we got in this game was any good, but, but hey, that's not what I'm talking about for this series. Well, not, not a majority of the time anyway. Of course, what I'm doing is ranking the characters, as always. This series will be one of the shorter ones, possibly my shortest yet if we're not counting LEGO Movie 2 game. I thought a lot about how I'm going to rank the characters, because it's not as simple as just including every character on the roster, like it is for some games. The special suits make a return in LEGO Batman 2, most of them being completely new from LEGO Batman 1. I debated with myself for a while on how I was going to rank them. In LEGO Batman 1, I separated the special suits from the standard suit of the character and did so for every character besides Batman and Robin that could use the special suits. So just Nightwing and Batgirl. I'm not going to do that this time because, spoilers, Batman and Robin aren't the only ones that can use the special suits, and that would probably make the list too bloated with random characters with identical abilities. What I'm going to do is represent each special suit once in the ranking. Every character that is able to interact with a special suit pad will have the suit pad considered to be an ability of theirs. It's a little hard to explain this without using examples because I don't want to spoil anything, but I'll explain further once we get to those examples, because trust me, I have more words about this issue. So with the full roster and four special suits, each for Batman and Robin, that makes 68 characters to rank. So yeah, a lot smaller of a roster than what we're used to. And as for other rules, no custom characters, obviously. Also, this game has the worst placement of custom character icons on the character grid that I've ever seen. What is this? Are, are they trying to make the character grid be in 4-3 aspect ratio? I'm going to do the same thing that I did with LEGO Pirates, where I have little introductory segments for each individual part, so look out for those. And, I mean, I have a lot to say about this game aside from just the characters, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get a crack a lacking at ranking every character in LEGO Batman 2. Did I really just say crack a lacking? I wrote that in the script, by the way. Sorry guys, we have to start off with the goons. Sorry, I hate it too. And I'm not excited to return to talking about them after all the stalling I did during the goon segments and the ranking of the first LEGO Batman game. But good news, there's only four of them in this game, and there are no henchmen in LEGO Batman 2 to bloat out the roster like they did in LEGO Batman 1, as if they're not just goons with hats. Also, the goons' designs in LEGO Batman 2 are a lot better, as their shirts aren't just one solid color. This though, the Riddler goon, is the least impressive goon of them all, mostly for his design. Riddler goon works for the... Do I really have to say? Doing so would be a spoiler, actually. Who could Riddler Goon be a goon of? Could it, could it have something to do with the question marks riddled all over his shirt? Or maybe he's just as curious as us to find out who he works for. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with the dumb whatever that was. Out of all the goons they could put in the roster to represent a villain, I'm very surprised they chose Riddler, given how little screen time he gets in this game. I know I just said the Riddler was an odd choice to have a goon for in the roster, but Two-Face even more so. 
Not only did Two-Face barely show up in the story, but at least the Riddler was a major villain in one of the campaigns in the first game. Two-Face looks a lot different in LEGO Batman 2 compared to LEGO Batman 1, and that's all due to the release of the LEGO sets at the time. When the first LEGO Batman game came out, Two-Face was based off of the 2007 sets. LEGO Batman 2 came out as the LEGO DC revival occurred, like in 2012, which gave Two-Face a revamped look with an extra colorful suit to boot. So, Two-Face gaining a special goon in the roster is, I guess, fine with me. What I should also mention is that there are more types of goons in this game that don't show up in the roster. Personally, if it was up to me, I'd switch out Riddler Goon with Poison Ivy's Leaf Goons. Uh, that's what they look like, by the way. If you're going to be a goon, at the least you can do is be visually unique. And I guess the Two-Face Goon can say his two-colored jacket makes him stand out a little more than the Riddler Goon, but, you know. Out of the four goons to be granted the privilege of being playable, half of them are the Jokers. It's a little weird how the other two goons are goons of villains with little screen time in game, but Joker is one of the two main baddies in this game and shows up quite a bit, so it's understandable that Joker has two goons representing him in the roster, and their designs differ enough for it to not feel repetitive. This is the Mime Goon, who dresses like a mime, who would have thought? Anyway, it seems like I've been ignoring the abilities of these goons. That's probably what you're asking, right? What about the abilities? And I haven't talked about them. Um, it's a little hard to talk about abilities of characters when they have none. You know, and, and I, that, yeah, that all the four goons, they all have nothing but their fists. Um, and just so you know, just so you know, in case you were thinking about clicking off, we're not going to see any abilities until the next part of the series. So I won't blame you if you stop watching now. But, but don't leave because... I like the AdSense. Thanks. We have arrived at the final goon of the series. Man, I'm just so glad they eased up on the villain subordinates in this game compared to the first LEGO Batman game. However, the means of unlocking goons is more annoying in this game. In LEGO Batman 1, you could just buy them from the store. Easy peasy. This game, still easy peasy, but requires you to be in the right section of the open world. Pretty frequently though, goons will just pull themselves out of the pavement and attack you. Depending on which area of Gotham you're in, different goons will show up. Fight and defeat like 10 of them, and then one will hold his hands up and be available for purchase. This wouldn't be so bad if you had to go through that once per goon and then just have them stop harassing you, but it never stops. Even if you 100% complete the game, these goons still dig out of their graves or, or whatever to attack you. They're not hard to fight, of course. I mean, one punch sends them flying, but it's annoying to deal with it constantly. Oh, and I like this clown goon the best because of the afro. That is all. We have graduated from supervillain goons and have entered... Uh, journalistic goons. Let's go with that. Vicky Vale here is the newscaster that essentially recaps the plot for you before every level. If you want to get technical, she did have the honor of being the first character to ever speak in a Lego game. Wait, no, that goes to Jake Lloyd's oopsie. Lego Star Wars 1. And the droids Rogers too. Okay, they, That was before they set the precedent though. Vicky Vale is a journalist based in Gotham, so basically the lowest lane counterpart in the land of the bat. She's made a few appearances in cartoons and films, but hasn't really been in the limelight. And I mean, I guess for good reason. I, I mean, Batman is pretty good at avoiding cameras, making her job harder and probably not relevant in a Batman story. But her purpose in this game seems pretty justified as the plot recapper before levels. That being said, it's not as exciting to see her as a playable character as she does nothing, but at least she has a name. Well, I name dropped a Lois Lane in the segment on Vicky Vale, so you could probably guess that she was coming up next. After all, they are both journalists. The only difference is that Vicky Vale isn't dating the superhero. Actually, never mind. Batman and Vicky Vale have dated in Tim Burton's Batman. There I go, Bechtel testing my own video, but other than journalism, there's not much to say about her. Lois Lane, though, does contribute a bit to Superman mythos, as she's usually snooping around for the latest scoop and, of course, is the love interest, you know, but other than 
her unlocking location in the open world, I don't recall her playing any sort of role in this game, in the story. She's just, you know, roster filler, which is disappointing. If you're going to fill the roster with random characters to make the game seem more worth the money, the least you can do is include some characters that actually do something. Because of course, as with everyone we've seen thus far in the series, she does nothing but punch. And Lois Lane is a journalist, something tells me she shouldn't even be punching. Now, it's a real shame to see the commish this low, and to think he was downgraded from the last game. That's right folks, the first game did Commissioner Gordon better than its sequel. Granted, Commissioner Gordon didn't really play a role in this game. Typically, he deals with putting away street level criminals, which also happen to be super powered maniacs, but still street level. The main villain of this game, aside from the Joker, is Lex Luthor. Billionaires that do illegal arms dealing and fun inhumane projects to take down Superman, well, that's a bit out of Commissioner Gordon's wheelhouse, so it makes sense for him to take a backseat in the story of this game. But you may ask, how is he downgraded from the first game? Well, take a look at him. Specifically his hands. More specifically, what's lacking from his hands. That's right, folks. Commissioner Gordon lacks a weapon. I want to ask why his weapon was revoked, but the answer might be enough to get this video demonetized, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. But he had a pistol in the first game, so what's the deal? Commissioner Gordon, without a gun, makes him more naked than he was in the killing joke. You know what I mean? Once again, we have another character that has no business being in this game, but is in it anyway to fill up the roster. Also, huge downgrade from the first game, in case you haven't seen my ranking for the first LEGO Batman game. Mad Hatter was ranked at number 10. 10. He was the 10th best character in LEGO Batman 1. In LEGO Batman 2, he's the 10th worst. I didn't plan that, by the way. I didn't do that on purpose. That's just how it shook out. Mad Hatter in LEGO Batman 1 had a surprising amount of abilities for such an early LEGO game. And how many of those abilities carried over to this game? None. Absolutely none. Now let's go through each ability that he had in LEGO Batman 1 and see what we missed out on. First, Mind Control. Mind control was its own ability in the first game where you can make guys open doors for you. This game has no such ability, so while I'll not fall to Mad Hatter for not having it, I'm, I'm still going to criticize LEGO Batman 2 for not having more abilities. The next ability definitely could have been in this game, his double jump. In the first game, Mad Hatter had a propeller that sprung out of his hat when double jumping that allowed him to go higher. Double jump is kind of an ability in this game, but it's kind of a baked into the agility ability, which of course we haven't seen yet. Finally, Mad Hatter had a pistol in the first game. Again, there's no reason for him to not have a pistol, so I don't know what TT Games is thinking. But hey, at least Mad Hatter clicks his heels while jumping, so I guess it's fine. 